welcome to our first scripted video. That's kind of weird to say. Everything's been a podcast or a Let's Play thus far. But anyways, thank you for joining us. We will be reviewing... I will be reviewing, there's no one here, the Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy. Now, warning, there are the following video will contain nitpicking, it will contain biased opinions. Uh, and it's so much as a review as, as it is my own personal account. Slash review, I guess. Whatever. This video is brought to you by that feeling you get when car almost hit you on the side of the road while you're jaywalking, but it doesn't hit you, and then for the rest of the day, you just kind of feel happy to be alive. Yeah, it's that. And guys, just before we start this review, if you don't know what a bandicoot looks like, this is how a bandicoot looks like. Right there. Yeah, it doesn't really look like the final product, does it? Well, let's continue on with the review. Crash Bandicoot was originally developed by Naughty Dog for the PlayStation 1. Crash was meant to be a mascot for the PlayStation and rivaled the likes of Sonic and Mario during the fifth generation of gaming. Crash was a big selling point for fans of the PlayStation 1. The character was funny and reckless and embodied everything about the 90s. You know, the no-neck thing and the fingerless gloves. Originally known as Willy the Wombat, the creator decided to change it since a character named Willy the Wombat had already existed. Crash Bandicoot was released for the PlayStation 1 on September 9th of 1996. And apart from the trilogy and the Crash Kart racing, the series has struggled to find any footing in today's market. Even with the last installment release on October 7th of 2008, has struggled to find any financial or critical success. The reason this happened is because the kart game was the last game that Naughty Dog was actually involved in. When they left the IP, they left the IP to Universal and they partnered up with different developers. And it could be a case of, I can't think of any case with a similar event, but yeah, it, it could have been that just these different developers have not been able to handle Crash the same way Naughty Dog has. Alright, with the introduction out of the way, let's get into the needy and gritty of this review. Despite what you think of the final product of Mighty No. 9 and Ukulele, their successful Kickstarter showed that 2D or 3D platformers from the 90s are still in demand. This could have been the catalyst for Sony to greenlight the remastered version of the three main series Crash games or the PlayStation 4. Having played these titles many times, I understand their strengths and their weaknesses. For example, the first game isn't that good, but where the first game faltered, the second and third flourished. Trust me, I know how bad the first game is. I quit it many times. It, I believe I never finished it. That, that's how much I didn't like it. I couldn't play it. But the second and third are genuine masterpieces. I love them to death. Now, that could just be me fanboying, but they're some of my first games that I've ever played. I'm about to have nostalgic feelings towards them. But the question is, does the end sane fix some of the problems found in these games? The answer is no. Which is a bittersweet answer if you ask me. It's great that they were able to keep the same feel and layout of the original games, but you think they maybe could have ironed out some of the existing faults of the series? So if you liked the games before, you'll like them again. And Sane, I believe, try to be as authentic as possible, but some small changes are made. Majority of them are for the best, but there are a couple that I don't like. In Crash 2, there's a warp room where you get to pick the level you want to play. Now, anyone that's played any Crash game understands the concept of gathering crystals, diamonds, color gems, whatever. In the original game, in Crash 2, you're able to keep track of all that shit on top of the door. It was easy, you could see like, oh, it's this and that. Perfect. But now, in the remastered version, it's on the side. Now, this may be nitpicking, but it's confusing to see which level pertains to. So for example, I'm looking at this door, right? I don't know if it's to the left or if it's to the right. Now, I know where the red gem is. I understand that, but I played the game before, but to a newcomer, they would have to go all, turn all the way to the right, be like, oh, so this side pertains to here, and so on and so forth. So it's always to the left. Oh, I got it. That's small, but still, it, it was just so much nicer just to have it up top there. Why does it have to be on the side? It's fucking stupid. Whatever. Another thing that I don't like about the series is the voice that they gave Crash. Um, I don't know. It just seems off-putting to me. That's not so much of a complaint, but more of a um, a, per a, a little gripe I have. I never pictured Crash sounding that way. So when they actually gave him a voice, 
it just sounds weird. Like if they ever gave Link a voice, you everyone has a different voice of Link in their head, so it'd be really weird to just give him a standard voice. But I do wish the Essane trilogy did more to help with the depth perception, as spatial positioning of platforms, enemies, and pitfalls get very difficult to judge. It's rough when you're having a perfect run cut short because you misread the location of a board on a bridge. Or you end up falling to your death for the final time and get one of the worst, and by worst I mean best, end over screens. It just game over. It's kind of intimidating. Game over. But it makes you want to keep playing the game, which I guess is good. Now, this kit this can get frustrating very easily because you can keep doing the same level over and over and over and over again to the point where you just quit. For example, this part right here is particularly frustrating. I just want to get on top of the ledge. That's all I want, and I can't. Look at this. It's bullshit. And this occurs in the beginning of the game. You think they'd be a little lenient with the jumping, but no, they have to make it tough as shit. What about this part over here where I keep dying because of my shitty depth perception? Do I like the game? Yeah. Is it frustrating? Fuck yeah. But the faults are on the original game more than the remake, so we have to cut it some slack. Something else that really brings my piss to a boil is the decision to exclude the crash cart racing. Why do they do that? Why not just include all four games in one? It would have been amazing to just get, no, to play it again. But as a financial decision, it makes no sense, but it had to be a conscious decision made by Sony. Now, if the internet's anything to go by, the kart racing actually has a bigger following than the main series titles, so if it makes you wonder why they weren't catering the fans. But, in, in all fairness, the Crash Insane trilogy was clearly developed with a lot of passion and love for the original games. The updated graphics are a beautiful sight to behold, even if you aren't using a PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, it seems like it's almost especially made for the third game. Just start the very first level in the very first game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It looks beautiful. Here, I'll put it up on screen right now. Yeah, that looks fucking gorgeous. That's Wind Waker HD levels of gorgeousness. And yet, some of the same quirky platforms that we came to love and be frustrated with the 90s are suddenly back. And I am in, I am, I'm happy. If this can open the door for other remasterings of 90s cartoons, oh, sorry, of 90s games, then all mean, give me some. I need some uh, Banjo and Kazooie. I need some, I don't know, I can't remember other ones. But I need those games back. Because, now this is a personal gripe of me. I don't like how everything in today's market, apart from indie games, like the main series titles, like AAA titles, they're all shooters, open worlds, horror games. I don't know. I like them all, but I miss the 90s platformers. I miss that. And Crash, if please do well financially, so then other companies see that they can develop platformers, and it's great. I believe that Crash Bandicoot and Sane Trilogy is the benchmark way of how to make future game classic remakes. They should be handled with a lot of care, a lot of love, and left intact, in perfection, and all. Oh, it's the end of the video. But if you guys like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more great content. And if you guys comment and tell Nick that you guys want to see more of this, then he'll actually let me do it. And this was a blast. I love doing it, and I would like to make it for future titles. All right? See you guys in the next video. Bye.